My name is Hannah Holman, and welcome to episode number nine of Influential Female Cellists. As you may have observed, we have taken a little bit of a hiatus because of COVID, and it has been about a year and a half. So thank you for hanging in there. And at long last, we are here today to talk about Guillermina Sugia. Um, she has literally uh, been on my bedside table for this whole year and a half. Uh, she's um, this amazing woman that I cannot wait to dive into today and talk to you about. If you know, have heard of Guillermina Suji at all, it may be because either her portrait or maybe partially because you have some recollection of hearing her name associated with the great public assaults. So let's dig in there and see um, a little bit more about Sugia. Guillermina was born June 25th in 1885 in Porto, Portugal. Her father, Augustus, is actually a cello professor, first in Lisbon, and then he got a new job in Porto. And he brought his wife, Alisa, with him. Uh, Guillermina had an older sister named Virginia, who was three years older. Both girls inherited their father's natural musical ability. And uh, Virginia played the piano. And Augustus really wanted uh, Guillermina to play the cello. Um, he ordered a three-quarter size cello for her from Paris. And again, if you recall some of our earlier episodes talking about the whole end pin thing, um, this cello came from Paris with an end pin. She performed uh, her first review as at the age of seven. She did very, very well with uh, her father teaching her. Somebody wrote up in the Porto Journal, she's dressed in blue, seated in a tiny chair, hugging her cello, reminding us of an enchanting little doll. Her small hands strained to grasp the strings. She smiled and played the bow as if she were playing in her bedroom with a toy. The movement of the bow was strong and secure, very admirable for an age at which the fingers lacked the strength and agility that only study and practice will bring the time. Her playing was so astonishing that the ladies and gentlemen got up to cheer her, covering her with kisses, which she smilingly acknowledged. So she was really tearing it up in Porto. Uh, it was a wonderful place for her and her sister to grow up, very supportive. There were lots of opportunities for her to play chamber music. By the age of 12, she was principal cellist of the local orchestra, the Orfeo uh, Portuguese. Augustus was teaching her, she was eating it up, Virginia was playing the piano, they were a duo, they were performing all over Portugal, and of course the father, Augustus, was getting all the accolades, but um, he was not like maybe uh, uh, Clara Schumann's father or Amadeus Mozart's uh, father, but he was very, very generous and supportive. In 1898, the great Pablo Casals came to Portugal, to actually play for a summer at a casino 16 kilometers south of Porto. Uh, he was 22, uh, Guillermina was 13, and Augustus, of course, was grabbing any and everybody so that they could hear his daughter. So he took Guillermina to play for the great Pablo Casals, and Casals agreed to take her as a student. So she studied with him all that summer of 1898. In 1901, she and her sister Virginia played for King Carlos and Queen Amelie. <laughs> and uh, the, the king and queen were so taken with them that the queen especially sent both girls a gold bracelet that had uh, diamonds and rubies in, in laid in the bracelet. Uh, the queen asked Sujia how she could help her and uh, the main thing that was obvious is that it was time for Sugia to get out of Portugal if she were to keep growing. Uh, Augustus did some research and the best teacher that they could think of for Guillermina, which was probably um, also uh, enhanced and uh, recommended by Pablo Casals, was Julius Klengel. Klengel was in Leipzig, and so through a scholarship through the Portuguese government, and probably with the help of the king and queen, Guillermina and her father Augustus left for Leipzig in 1901. Now, she did not officially enroll in the Leipzig Conservatory. Uh, it was thought of is that the women that were 
there were women in the conservatory in 1901, but uh, most of the women were going to have careers as teaching the younger kids and not as a great soloist. So I don't know exactly how it came to be, but uh, Guillermina studied privately with uh, Julius Klingel. Meanwhile, Virginia and the mother, Elisa, were back in Portugal and Virginia was actually teaching piano lessons and sending money uh, to her father and to Guillermina. The whole family was supporting Guillermina's career. Um, it really took a strain and luckily Guillermina uh, was so awesome that she finished the three years that she was supposed to be there in a year and a half. And so by 1903, uh, Julius Klingel arranged for her to play for the great conductor Arthur Nikisch, um, who conducted the Leipzig Gewandhaus Orchestra. Nikisch was very, very taken with her um, and booked her to play uh, the Volkmann Concerto with the Leipzig Gewandhaus Orchestra. In trying to find some pieces that best represented uh, Sugia, I did look up the Volkmann Concerto, wondering if this was a hidden gem. and. I think there's a reason maybe we haven't heard of the Volkmann, but she really must have knocked it out of the ballpark because um, she was called back to the stage so many times that uh, for an encore, she repeated the entire concerto again. <laughs> she actually played a duet with her teacher, Julius Klingel. She was 18 and um, she played the first part and he played the second, which was like a major scandal. And uh, so in response to people saying, why are you letting her play the first part? He said, I am old. I am beginning to decline. She is young and full of talent. She knows all the secrets of the cello and is on her way up. She will go so high that no one will be able to reach her. Sorry, got a little choked up there. Uh, so here she was, she had finished her studies. She was 18, she was gonna go. Um, she went home for a little bit and then she toured all over Europe. 1906, that's the first time we hear of Sugia reconnecting with Pablo Casals. She wrote a postcard to a friend saying that they were engaged to play the more double cello concerto. So I think that uh, it's pretty obvious that that's um, when their big romance started. She moved in with him in Paris in 1907 um, and I think it was probably very amazing for a long time. I think that was the hub of all artists and great intellectual minds coming to visit uh, their, their apartment in Paris. Now, as you can imagine, there, there are some misconceptions about Sujia studying with him, but the very fact that um, I, don't, I don't think she did study with him then, I think she was really his equal. She had had years of concertizing uh, to great success all throughout Europe. So I think it was really as two equals that they were um, living together. Now, she says that they actually got married and she signed all of her autographs between 1907 and 1913, uh, Mademoiselle Guillermina Sugio Casals. And in fact, I own uh, an autograph of her and Casals where they both sign it. Uh, Casals. But there's never been a, a record of uh, any marriage certificate or a di divorce certificate. Casals was Catalonian. He, he kind of thought about marriage and relationships very traditionally. And though he was supportive of Sugia's career, uh, I think that probably Casals wanted to settle down and Sugia knew that um, she did not want children and she wanted to really emphasize her career. And I think that they both had strong artistic temperaments probably, and there's some reports of uh, huge fights and dishes being thrown. And um, so in 1913, the relationship ended and basically their paths much, must have crossed along the way in the next few decades, but neither of them uh, spoke of the other ever again. Um, well, that's not entirely true. Garamina had huge respect for Casals and did mention that um, and spoke about how he was such an influential teacher and a great musician. But I'm not sure that it happened the other way around. I don't, I haven't seen any reports of Casals speaking of Garamina, but maybe they're out there. 
Guillermina had a really wonderful feeling about the UK and about London specifically. When the breakup happened, uh, she was at a loss for where to go. Portugal was not exactly where she should be or she thought that she should be for her career. So she decided to move to London where she had a really good warm feeling. And uh, it's if, interesting, if you think about it, uh, the suffragette movement was really um, happening in London. As you recall from maybe some of our previous episodes, Beatrice Harrison was in uh, London at this time. This would have been around 1914, uh, May Mukley, and uh, of course, Ethel Smythe, the great uh, British composer, and uh, Rebecca Clark, who we've also spoken about. So I think um, she wasn't really a member of the women's movement, but she must have uh, felt supported in moving to London. She was a huge success, the star of, of England. They really um, uh, uh, embraced her and, and called her their own. Uh, it was around this time that she met a wealthy man named Edward Hudson. He was a magazine um, editor, magnet, owner. <laughs> he ran the magazine Country Life, uh, and he was very, 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 um, in love with her and supportive of her. And in fact, um, he gave her the most incredible engagement present of uh, 1717 Stradivarius that she played on for the rest of her life. He uh, engaged the painter Augustus John, who you may remember from the Amaryllis Fleming uh, episode, uh, to paint a portrait of Guillermina Sugia. And this portrait, I think, is probably what she is best remembered for today. It is the striking um, portrait of a strong woman playing the cello. And it was started in 1920, but it actually took three years to complete. Um, and Guillermina was said to have said that, um, you know, how, how did she, he do that? And she said that every single time that she sat for him, she was practicing. And so uh, it, I think it was a very long process. Um, in fact, again, tying into the Amaryllis Fleming video, uh, you remember there was some controversy about her, her parentage, and there were some rumors at the time that maybe Guillermina Sugia was, in fact, her mother, which was not true, as we later found out. But the cello and the long hours uh, posing for um, Augustus John. But around then, she, uh, her mom was failing in Portugal, and uh, she needed help. So they had a close family doctor named Dr. Uh, Menya, and um, Guillermina was so grateful to him to, for helping her with her parents while she was busy concertizing. But I think she was actually getting pretty exhausted, and I think she wanted to come home. So in 1923, she met this doctor, and uh, they got engaged. So. Um, I think she was engaged, well, if we count the Casals episode maybe three times, and she finally did get married in 1927 at the age of 42 to, to Dr. Menya. One of her greatest regrets um, was never coming to America. She uh, was offered um, by Elizabeth Coolidge to come and play in Washington, D.C. and in upstate New York on a, uh, several series. But supposedly she said, I know my worth and this does not pay enough, so I'm not coming. But I think later in life she still tried, even though she um, was almost on her deathbed, she still tried to come to America because I think she realized that she missed that opportunity. She remained busy playing her, the whole rest of her life. I think the fact that she kind of had home base in Portugal and her husband, uh, who was a radiologist, was there to kind of support and help her, freed her up to, to perform. Um, she was diagnosed with cancer uh, and she did go to England to have uh, surgery, but um, it was kind of too late. Once she knew that she was dying of cancer, she still played up till a month before her 
death. Um, she was very well organized and she made provisions to have her Strad um, taken care of by the Royal Academy of Music in London and it was to be sold along with her very valuable bows including a Voran um, to establish a Sugia Trust. And her Montagnana actually rests in Portugal and is being loaned out to deserving young students. In trying to um, order her life, she knew that the end was near. This is very, very tragic to me, um, but beautiful. She actually wrote to Pablo Casals because they had never spoken again. Cher ami, I write you with emotion and I hope you won't refuse me, but it concerns your festival at Prague. I so want to hear you and see you again that I've arranged with a good friend to bring me to France where I expect to arrive around the 8th or 9th of June. I have been quite sick lately and although I feel somewhat better at the moment, I doubt that I'll be able to continue my career for much longer. The death of my husband a year ago was a blow. I live quietly in my house in Porto and I still work toward the ideal of perfection that you inspired in me. I hope you understand what joy you will give me if you agree that I may come thanking you a thousand times in advance. I remain your devoted admirer. Do you remember the little 11 year old girl, she was actually 13, who went to the casino to take lessons with you? Au revoir, uh, Guillermina Sugia. It was 1950, the year that Guillermina wrote that postcard to Casals. Alas, she never went to the festival. She did not see him again, and she knew the end was, was near. She was so organized that she did her hair, did her nails, dressed in her best concert gown, and that night she lay down with her Montagnana next to her side and passed away. Thank you so much for uh, listening and uh, learning some more about Guillaume Nasugia. This is a really thorough book by Anita Mercier, uh, and it's been on my bedside, as I mentioned, for a year and a half. Uh, also, there's um, a 50-minute documentary on YouTube in Portuguese about her. And even if you don't speak Portuguese, uh, there are no subtitles. Um, the pictures and video are amazing, so I encourage you to watch that. We can remember Sujia for being such an amazing role model for so, so many women. Thank you so much for being with me today, and I hope you enjoyed learning about the great Guillermina Sujia, and I treasure her and all of her inspiration that she gave to so many.